Hey, welcome back. I'm in the middle of grading homework number three, and I saw I saw some people struggling with uh, defining and creating differential equations so that you can actually integrate them. So I wanted to put up a video, helpfully, so hopefully answer some of those questions. This is it's probably one of the harder concepts in this course is taking a differential equation the way that you usually see it in like either a differential equation class or a physics class, like that equation of motion, turning it into something that the computer can integrate and, and give you like multiple steps through. So I wanna take, take this a little bit of time, talk about this. Um, and first step is this uh, free falling equation where we're, where we're incorporating drag into that free fall equation. And this uh, reading that I'm looking at is the step to the future and then also the get with the oscillation. So those two readings have uh, different integration methods and methods to set up functions for those differential equations. And I'm going to start off by writing things because um, a lot of times it seems like, oh, I, let me just jump right in, start coding, and then your code gives you an error. Really, you want to have some kind of math background, some kind of analytical uh, plan before you jump in and try to execute that into code. So let's take this differential equation. First, I'll define this differential equation and then write out like some pseudo code of what that turns into as far as like an actual equation of motion that I can integrate over time. Okay, so getting started, I've got force of drag, mass times gravity, overall is equal to that mass times acceleration. So I'll say MA equals MG minus FD. So A is gonna be G minus FD over M, and this is G minus some kind of C times velocity squared. Well, I'll, I'll call it like C over M times velocity squared like this. All right, that's my, and let me just delete all this, and I'll write, put this over here, C over M V squared. This is my equation of motion. It's a second order differential equation of motion because here I'm saying that the second derivative of y over second derivative of time is equal to g minus c over m dy dt squared like this. Um, so second order O D E. All the integration methods, so let, I'm gonna go into the readings for a second. So coming in this Euler Cromer method, um, this modified Euler method using um, state and the, and the mid state and the next state, and then Hune's method, which is like an implicit Euler integration. All of these are first order differential equation integration methods. So you're figuring out based on some function that's a first order differential equation, what is the next step based on the time step, however big your time step is. And then here it's got some kind of error, error tolerance and like maximum iterations because it's like actually converging. Um, so no matter how I define this equation, what I need is to say that my, my second order differential equation is a set of first order differential equations. So I wanna transform this into, and I can create as many first order differential equations as I want, but I need first order. I can't integrate second order differential equations. So this is one first order differential equation, one second order differential equation. I wanna turn it into two first order differential equations. So equation one is going to say that V is equal to dy 
over dt. This is a kinematic ODE based on the definition of speed. Speed has to be the change in position. So it's then my second equation is going to say that dv over dt is g minus c over m times v squared. So in order to define, <clears throat> in order to get a value for v and dv dt, I need to know what y is and what v is. So I'm going to call my state y and v. And then the change, this ddt of state, this is going to be equation 1 and equation 2. So d dt of state is, I'm going to put it just in a column format just because it's going to be state 1 because state 1 is velocity and then this one is going to be g minus c over m and let me put it in terms of state state 1 oops, squared and this is equal to v and dv over dt. So this is the plan that I'm trying to execute in Python code, is that I'm creating a state variable that's my height and my speed, and the change in my state variable is going to be my speed and my acceleration. It might, at first it seems kind of silly to define the speed and then calculate the speed. Uh, but it gives us, it gives, it creates two first order differential equations out of one second order differential equation. So in all of um, physics equations, every equation of motion is F equals MA. The forces are going to be some function of speed and position. So you'll have some kind of, you need speed and you need position uh, to define how what force is there, so then the acceleration comes out of that. Um, anyway, that's just what we have to do. So my A free fall, or actually, let's call it like, my free fall function is going to be, if I give it my state, and technically the time, here it's time independent, but maybe we have like a force or a thrust on it, but anyway state and time, it's going to return that state of 1 and g minus c over m state of 1 squared, like that. That's what I'm trying to define here. And I have the reading open here, but I'm, I'm just going to open up a new, let's just do a new untitled import numpy, import matplotlib, free fall, and I'll zoom in some so we can see this, my state and time. Technically, all the methods that we've been using, um, if I go into like hewn step or, um, well, let's, let's use like a mod an Euler Cromer method. Um, so I'll, I'm just gonna copy this method. You don't have to, like when I ask you to use an Euler Cromer method or, or any of these other methods, you don't have to code it from scratch. Like you can copy it, but that's okay. Um, so let's, let's just put, put this in here. I'm just going to paste in that Euler Cromer. It's got arguments. It's got, it's got a doc string. So we should be able to figure out how to use it. This one is just going to plug in the state 
into my right hand side. So my right hand side has to be some kind of function. So I'm going to define this function as free fall of state. And I'll say, if I want, I could say like h comma v is my state like this. Um, that's kind of a nice way to keep track of your variables like height and velocity are state. Then my d state is going to be, I like to set it equal to the same shape as state. Um, like this so that whatever I plug in for state, it's going to at least create zeros for that. And let me just show you what I mean. So right now I haven't defined the differential equation. Uh, whoop, what did I do wrong? Oh yeah, I should actually use the definition for it, right? So if I ask for free fall of, let's say 100 meters moving at 10 meters per second. Um, oh yeah, that one doesn't have a shape. Then because this array is a just length to array, it's going to return a length to array. Right now it's all zeros, but I'll replace those one by one. So D state of zero, this is the change in height. So the change in height is going to be equal to velocity here. So that's equal to velocity. My D state one, is going to be equal to that g minus c c over m times v squared, just like that. Um, so now let's run that and just check if it gives us, so g is not defined. We can define all that stuff, right? Let's. And we'll say C, I'm just going to put it as one for now. It's kind of high, but it's okay. M also say is one. So hundred meters up moving 10 meters per second. Acceleration is going to be negative 90 meters per second squared. Um, cool. So that's how, that's how I can define that free fall equation. Um, so now, because I have this Euler Cromer defined up here, this what this is going to do is give the next state given, let's move that down here. So given the current state, the right hand side and the change in time, it's going to give me the next state here. So Euler Cromer of, let's see, so I give it the state, then the right-hand side. So I'm going to take this state, put it here. Free fall is just an equation. And let's do 0 0.1 seconds. So if it was moving, if it was 100 meters up and really I should have this as like negative 100 just because well or I could call this like a negative g and add positive here and let me show you why I'm flipping those signs in here right now down is a positive number but if I want to make If I want to say that up is positive, that I'm at a positive height and I'm moving towards zero, then really I want to say G is, I want to flip this over and say MA is going up, G is going down, drag is up. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to flip that so that we can look at the thing falling. So it was moving 10 meters per second. Um, it was at a hundred meters tall. Now it's at, oh yeah. G, 
Oh, it goes there. This has a lot of drag on it. One. Still moving up. What am I doing wrong here? Let's see what drag I used in the in the readings. Zero point two five. So let's try that one. Oh yeah, so we'll say negative. Because now negative velocity is moving towards the ground. That's what that's what I'm trying to do. So it's moving down 10 meters per second. That was the problem. I was saying that it was going up. If you want to take into account like that it can move up and down, then we can add another statement here, like times the sine of V. Because sine of negative 10 is negative one, sine of positive 10 is one. So you can use that to give, give it a, so we could say minus that sine of V. So if it's a negative number, it's, it's a positive, and if it's positive, down. But anyway, that doesn't change the output that we have here. And again, this is only giving us one step in time. So it's for a given height of 100 meters and a speed of 10, negative 10 meters per second, so moving down towards the ground, the next after 0.1 seconds, it'll be at 99 meters. Now it's moving negative 9.18, so it's slowing down a little bit. So you threw it down off of a building, but it's starting to slow down to its um, terminal velocity. So this is the main part that you have that you have to get right is that the the differential equation has to take in one state and the state can be a list of uh, an array of as many different parts of that function as you need and then it returns the derivative of all those parts so the derivative of position is speed the derivative of speed is acceleration and now let's define time it goes zero to 10 seconds let's do 50 51 steps well let's go zero to five seconds with 51 steps dt is going to be equal to t1 minus t0 so this is going to become a dt statement My state, I'm going to set it all to zero. So I'm going to say that it's NP zeros, length of time. So there are going to be 51 rows and two columns. The first column is gonna be my height. The second column is my, so height comma speed. So first column is height, second column is speed height as a function of time, speed as a function of time. My first state is my initial value. So it's gonna be, here I'm calling it 100 and negative 10, like this. And I'm gonna go from one to the length of time So I can say state of I. So my neck, my my current state, this ith state is going to be the state of I minus one colon. My right hand side is my still the same free fall equation. And then the step size is dt. And then 
I'm just going to look at the state, just print it all out. Starts off at 100, negative 10, which is what the initial value that I gave it. And then the next step is that 99, negative 1 point, negative 9.18. So it's starting to slow down, which is uh, what we saw before. And then it keeps dropping down. So it keeps going down and down until it gets to like 67 meters. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Plot T and I'll plot all of the, all the rows in that first column to see. Starts off at 100, moves a little fast and then slows down pretty quickly and moving at basically terminal velocity the rest of the time. So this one's a little boring. Let's do this. We'll set the initial speed to zero. So we drop it. And now we see starts to starts to drop like a free fall equation, then gets into terminal velocity. Terminal velocity for this is happening pretty quick, at least on the scale of three seconds. Usually by the time you hit two seconds, you've reached terminal velocity for these kind of things. Unless we make like mass really big. I think 50 kilograms was the other one that we were looking at, right? So now it looks a little bit more like a free fall equation because the force of drag has way less effect. The bigger the mass is, the smaller as you divide through by mass, that force of drag has a smaller and smaller effect, like the denser something is. But pretty cool. This is this is my preferred way of setting up that differential equation and then solving it here. Um, so you need that you need a for loop once once you're once you're trying to integrate this differential equation, you have to step through state by state. Same thing that we did in project one, where we were looking at changes in temperature. It's just there we had a, a constant value changing. Now we care about both the height and now we have speed, that the speed is changing this way. And they're both contained inside that state variable that I'm initializing as a bunch of zeros and then I'm replacing all of those zeros with either initial conditions or the Euler Cromer steps. This is the way we're doing it in this class. Uh, the reason that I give you um, like this Euler Cromer method and the, all these other ones, so Euler method and we have modified Euler method. And again, you can copy and paste these right into your homework to, to work on them. Um, here's like a hewn step, another implicit method. I give you these so you can look at like, what, is, what does it take to actually build these kind of stepping solutions? If you're actually doing some engineering work, you're probably going to import it. So from scipy.integrate import um, solve initial value problem and solve initial value problem this is a really powerful integration method where it takes in a single function uh, the time span initial values if you want to evaluate a given times and you give it t evaluations and then you can tell it what method you want the Runga cut of 45 is another explicit method, so it's not going to um, it's not going to reach some specified error at every step. Step, uh, but there are some implicit methods. So here, Runga cut is explicit. Two three is another explicit. Um, another explicit. Let's see. Here's this BDF, the implicit multi-step, and that one that one's an implicit method that you can use as well. Uh, the Adams BDF is another integration method, but this one, it uses a little different, this one is a little, it always expects a time and a state. So you have to give it, you have to have time as part of your differential equation. So if I'm trying to use it here, I would say solve equals solve IVP. Oops. I could spell. I'm going to use a lambda, like a, and t comma y, 
uh, let's call it TCOM estate of freefall of state. This is telling it that yes, you can give it a T, but don't use it in my function because my function doesn't have a T. Um, then come over here. I'll go from zero to five seconds, just like I did before. Um, my initial value is going to be 100 and zero. And let's try that just to start. Scroll down. This one, SOL, the solution, short for solution, not, not, not out of luck. It gives you each of the state variables in Y and all the times where the solution was made in T. So I'm gonna close this. So if I plot this result, I get the same values that I got before, but it's, it's only a couple of points, like it solves for a few of them up here, then skips some time steps and skips again out here. Um, it, it is, for the most part, usually it is a converged solution. Sometimes it's not, but I can always say this T eval, set that equal to the times. So I can look at the same times here. So now it'll give me all of those times there. And let's plot our first solution too. Um, T and state colon zero. And we can see that they're both pretty close. Right now, the, the blue line is probably more converged than ours because this Runga cut of four or five has a better convergence for the same size for the same time step size it'll converge quicker than this um euler cromer will anyway this is this is the method that most people will use if they're using python to integrate a function um, defining this for loop to step through every part of your state it's a nice way to like under try to understand how you're going through each of these steps rather than sort of, this is kind of a black box because I just said, give me the solution from this free fall equation. Okay, thanks so much. Uh, I'll probably end up posting another video today as I see uh, more stuff in the homework, but uh, I thought this would be a nice way, nice uh, starting point. All right, thanks again.